Last time we talked to you, Mr. Ben Anderson, you had just come back from doing a documentary on Afghanistan, following the British troops there, and it was a it was a bit of a cock up. Yeah. Uh, and now you just got back from Dubai. Yeah. Now most people know about Dubai because they're trying to be the hub of the Middle East, and you went and found out some stuff about the guys actually building the big shiny skyscrapers in the world's biggest mall and the world's biggest aquarium and all that stuff. Right. Yeah, the, the guys who are, who are being paid almost nothing to build it. So they're being built by? Slaves. That's not an exaggeration, yeah. Really? But once, they're, once they find themselves out there mm. and they realize how much they're getting paid or how much they're not getting paid, they're indebted by the time they arrive there. So it is bonded labor. <laughs> We focused on a lot of Bangladeshi workers. So the local agents approach them in the villages, say, you've heard about Dubai, you've heard how amazing it is. I can get you a job out there where you get paid 300 pounds a month, which to them is an amazing salary. Pay me 2,000 pounds, 200,000 taka, local money. I'll get you out there. It'll take you six months, a year to pay off the 2,000 pounds. Then you'll start sending loads of money home. And before you know it, you'll be buying your family a shop or a farm or, or whatever it is. Uh, as soon as they land, their passports are taken away. They also then find out they're getting paid between 120 and 160 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. And this is for six days a week, 12 hours a day, and living eight men to a room, and in what we saw were absolutely squalid conditions. The dream of escaping the dreary British winters and joining the celebs in the sun is one many Brits share. So I pretended to be one of them and signed up for a first group tour that they promised would show me a side of Dubai which simply can't be revealed from a website or newspaper article. The first group sales team were adamant the workers building their projects were treated well. You know, the first group workers, they look, they look, you look after them? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, they all have got like a staff accommodation. So I, I think they're pretty happy to be here actually, because it's, it's much more difficult to, well, to earn some money in Pakistan or in India. Yeah. So it's all fine. I mean, because it's important for us to know that. No, you know, absolutely, absolutely. Don't worry, there are, there are no slaves here. So this is what I found interesting about this is, this is the common perception, even when I was there in, in Dubai, is that, oh, it's good for them. Yeah, you it know? looks bad to us, but for them, yeah, it looks for bad them, to us, okay. but yeah, yeah. yeah, it's good for them. And we can't get on site to interview the workers, but we're going to wait until they knock off, follow them back to their labor camp, and see what conditions are like on, on this, which is one of the most high profile projects in the whole of Dubai. This is pretty much how we worked for over a period of three months out there. Sneak in or speak to them before they went into the labor camp, because there's a camp boss at every single gate stopping people going in. You're not allowed to talk to them? No, 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 no. So, so we'd, we'd try and grab them before they went in and, and say... What would happen if you get caught? Um, well, journalists in the past have been imprisoned and, and, and fight, you know, been slapped with massive, massive fines out there. First impressions, you know, are... If you didn't know it was a place where workers lived, you'd think it was a place where the machinery was stored. No street lights. I can't even smell sewage. Just sheets of corrugated iron protecting rows of huts. It looks like a, a shanty town. So how many? There's two, four, six, eight. Eight people in this room? Nine. Nine people. But before we could interview the workers, the camp boss turned up. Speak English? Yeah, what do you huh? What do you We want to see whether people are happy. Is it okay? Not okay. So do you want us to leave? Yeah. Okay. Sure. No problem. Okay. Well, we shall leave now. Okay, well. There was fear among the unit workers about speaking to us. They felt they could be sacked and sent home if they were discovered speaking out. That shot is is basically you know my my vision of Dubai now. You know, all the glittering skyscrapers on the horizon, mm, mm. and you're in this sort of black hole a few miles away, mm. which is where these guys live. So what are we going to see now? We met an Indian agent who's been sending workers to Dubai for years, making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And they complained to her a lot, and she just put it down to them whinging. 
but these guys were particularly persistent, so she thought she'd investigate. Uh, when she actually finally found these guys, it took her like two months to find these guys, made her so angry that she's now the first, as far as I know, first agent to speak out about this and speak out with us. As we drove into it, she said, that building over there, that's it. You wouldn't even keep cattle in that building. The story of the migrant workers is the dark side of Dubai, the side which the annual 1.1 million British visitors to this country never see. We'll see the living conditions are really, really appalling. Almost inhuman conditions they've been living out here. This is their very, very, very basic toilet facilities available to them. That's the toilet? Two toilets and one shower unit for 45, 45 people. people. Right now I seriously wish the world would wake up and look beyond the glitter to the actual darkness which is there behind. I seriously don't think there is a lot of moral consciousness amongst the employers over here. And I would not say just one or two companies, most of the companies have absolutely no regard for the human life or the human element of this job that is involved over here. Absolutely no regard, no. You see they're building a fire there. Mm -hmm. There is a hob in the building, but there's no gas. The company don't supply them with gas. So they just build themselves a fire out in the backyard. And that's, that's how they cook for all 45 men. So they don't have water, they don't have cooking facilities? No, 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 they're, they're, they're completely independent. Whatever they get, they scrape together themselves. Yeah, I mean, we, we spoke to guys who said all month they eat bread, rice, potatoes, that's all they eat. And I said, you know, what about meat or fish? Don't you ever eat meat or fish? They said two or three times a month mm. they can eat meat or fish. And we went into one kitchen and we saw the guys cooking, you know, their, their luxury portion of fish for the month. And it was like four guppies, I mean, four fish like this big, that, that was all it was. They are easy prey for recruitment agents in their home countries who charge them huge fees just for the privilege of working in Dubai. On average, they pay around 2,000 pounds, a sum of money so high that they have to take out loans or sell family land to pay it. Um, yeah, there are an estimated three million of these workers in the Arab Emirates, United Arab Emirates. So if they're paying 2,000 pounds each, that's you know, some serious money. What's that for? It's called a visa fee, and it's supposed to cover the visa and the flight, which of course is much less than two thousand pounds. But that, 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 that's what it's called: is the visa fee. It, it's, it's just a fee for the agent to, for, to arrange the privilege of being able to go and work in in this paradise. And is there actually a visa fee? That you have it's, to pay it, the it, it, it's illegal for the company or its representatives to charge the workers for the visa or the transport. There would be a contract signed in the host state, and he would then be flown to Dubai. On arrival in Dubai, that contract would effectively be ripped up. He would be paid sometimes half of what the intended uh, salary was, and his, his passport would also be confiscated. The Scottish guy is, is very interesting. Almas, the Indian agent, was so outraged by what she found when she found these workers mm. that she wrote to everybody she could think of. I mean, obviously everyone in the Dubai government, but Amnesty International, Human Rights, everybody. Mm. Nobody replied. He's the only person that replied. He used to work for an oil company in Abu Dhabi and was so outraged by what he saw you know, being done to the workers, that he's now set up an NGO called Matthew Woster. And he was the only one that replied to Almas. Wow. Well, so nobody cares? No. To the forgotten slaves of Dubai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they were, they, they were largely not known in the first place. These men were shunted from camp to camp before ending up here, either jobless or forced to serve out their contracts. The families they left behind do not receive any money from them. There is no get-out clause. Even if their passports were returned to them, they couldn't afford to go home. They're trapped. Basically, yes, you can say they are in kind of a bondage to the company. With the span of the contract that they are here. Isn't holding passports supposed to be illegal? Yes, there are a lot of things which are supposed to be illegal, but they still happen here and it's very regular. That, that happens very often. There are some laws in place. For example, there was a law introduced recently where if the temperature goes above 50 degrees, I think it is, the workers are supposed to you know, down tools and rest until it gets cooler. So as a result, the temperature never went above 50 degrees. How can it not go above? Well, officially, it never went above 50 degrees. I mean, it did go above 50 degrees, but according to official records, it never went above 50 oh, degrees. Right, right. So workers never stopped working. There is nothing for me. I borrowed from other people to buy food. It's been five months he has not paid me at all. <laughs> 
I have begged for food or remained hungry. Somehow or other, I am surviving. My wife and children tell me to send some money or come back. Where will I go? It took an hour for the workers to travel back to their camp. They wanted to speak out, but didn't dare reveal their identities. Like every other worker we spoke to in Dubai, they were in debt and claimed they were not being paid the money they were promised by their recruiting agents. So I grabbed the hard hat and snuck into the camp with a secret camera. Did you have to shoot a lot on a hidden camera? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the interviews, all of the footage inside the camps were on a hidden camera. Because yeah. if you get caught, you can get in trouble. And, and allegedly, the government have got paid informers all over the place, in hotels, taxis, everywhere. So yeah, you've got to be, got to be really careful out there. So basically, the uh, big sort of main thoroughfare that separates the accommodation from the, from the toilets is just all deep, thick mud. And they say urine and shit from the toilets. And actually, the areas around the toilets are the, the wettest, muddiest, and smelliest areas. So I'd say they're saying, telling the truth. There were so many rivers of sewage blocking so many of the walkways that workers had actually set up a network of stepping stones to get back to their accommodation. So it must have reeked. Yeah, yeah, horrible. I mean, they, they said to me, this is all raw sewage, and I, you know, I didn't know whether they were telling the truth or not. And as soon as you get close to it, 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 you know, it hits you. It's like a... So their toilets are just going out onto the streets? Yeah. The areas between the toilet blocks were the most disgusting. There was no doubt that this is where the problem was coming from. I don't know if the water works, but they can't flush it away after they've used the toilet. You know, I tried to check every single tap. A lot of them, there was no tap to turn. Mm. A lot of them you turn it and no water comes out. So yeah, they can't, they can't flush it away and it just sits there. But I, I got to, I don't know the fourth or fifth toilet and I just started retching so I couldn't take it anymore. And you're not a squeamish guy. I mean, you've been to Afghanistan, you've been to the Congo, you've been to all the bad places. On yeah, I worked as an undertaker with dead bodies. Worked as an undertaker. But and the, so yeah. this is going to yeah, be pretty yeah. bad. And, and the workers I spoke to that night said this is good compared to how it has been. Wow. In a statement, the company blamed the workers, saying their standards of cleanliness and hygiene are not up to your or our standards. It's very difficult to change the habits that they unfortunately bring with them from their countries of origin. Panorama has obtained documents which reveal it's more likely to be Arab Tech's own cleaning regime which is the problem. A day before I'd filmed in the camp toilets in January, the Dubai authorities warned Arab Tech about insufficient cleaning of toilets. So the, go the government knows about it, what yeah. are they doing about it? Well, we, we were quite impressed that the government had been there and said the situation was critical, but they'd fined them £2,000. And they um, hadn't done anything? No, I mean, it, was, it was still awful a month later. Um, we've put these allegations to the company and they've basically said it's the workers' fault. Trade unions and collective bargaining are illegal in Dubai, and with the companies themselves now suffering because of the international financial crisis, the consequences of complaining are worse than ever before. <laughs> they are telling, now that you have come, you stay and work. If we find any mistakes in your work, then finish. Back to Bangladesh. We will no longer keep you. If you work well, if the company prospers in the future, we will see what can be arranged for you. So do you think there's a chance things could improve for you here? We have no hope for the future. We are helpless. So you've got three million workers that are brought over, their passports are taken away, uh, they're not getting them paid the money that they should, in fact they don't have enough money really to eat, they have uh, squalid conditions, raw sewage, you just came back from there, I mean how do you feel coming back from, from, from the City of Lights? Uh... Well the, the, the reality of Dubai is the complete opposite to what you see on television and in magazines, in fact I asked the Indian agent, I said um, you know, what do you think of now when you see all these glossy pictures and videos from Dubai? She said, now I just see skeleton. Mm -hmm.